Have you ever been riding around in Chicago and thought, hey, this doesn't feel right. Why are we so high up? No, just me. Well, too bad. Cause today we're talking about that one time the city of Chicago got a lift. Not like in a rental car or anything, like a literal lift out of the mud. Before Chicago was known for deep dish pizza, the silver bean thing, Al Capone, and being windy, it was known for the muck and the mud. Not like the muckrakers muck, that was a couple decades later, and if you even got that reference, you're a nerd. Bonus US history points to you. I'm talking about literal mud. The streets were absolutely covered in it. Sort of like this stuff we get in the winter, but with mud instead of snow, and always instead of when Chicago does the big cold. The problem started way back when in the before times. Lake Michigan was actually bigger, approximately this much bigger. Skip over a couple seconds later and the the water receded, leaving behind a low-lying tall grass prairie just a couple feet above the lake. This prairie eventually became the spot where the powers that be decided the city of Chicago should go, except they failed to foresee a little bit of a problem. At some point in between Lake Michigan receding and Chicago Chicagoing, people forgot about two very important things. One, that water needed to go places that wasn't the street, and two, well, no, that was kind of really the main problem. See, since the land was so low, water and sewage didn't really have anywhere to go. So you know, it didn't. It just stayed there, making the streets a sloppy mix of mud and sewage. It ended up causing all sorts of public health problems you might expect from having your streets paved in literal sludge, like a cholera outbreak that killed 1 in 20 Chicagoans. At some point, the city said enough is enough and something had to be done, so they decided to do something absolutely revolutionary by today's standards. Fix the roads. They tried a couple different solutions. First, they tried grading the streets so that the water would drain into the Chicago River, and well, that didn't work. So they moved on to the next idea trying to pave the roads with wooden planks, and well, that didn't really work either. The wood just kind of trapped the moisture in and caused them to mold and get all weird and stuff. Finally, in 1856, city engineer Ellis S. Chesborough had a brilliant idea. Why don't we lift the entire city up and install a sewer system underneath it? To which the city council responded, yep, sounds like a great idea, let's do that. And so, they did that. They got a bunch of absolute cheds together with hydraulic jacks and literally inch by inch moved up entire buildings and eventually entire city blocks 5 to 14 feet up off the ground. People were understandably a little bit skeptical because, you know, who even does that? But George Pullman, a guy in the building lifting upper business, got a contract to lift up the Tremont House, a famous fancy hotel by promising not to disturb the guests and, well, he really delivered. The process was apparently so gentle and gradual that people continued along as if nothing short of spectacular was happening. Happening. Businesses kept businessing, and people came in, worked, shopped, and did all the other businessy things. People were entirely oblivious to the fact that the building was just a little bit higher than it was when they entered, with one guest of the hotel being surprised that the windows were eye level when he checked in and were now above his head. In just about a week, the whole thing was moved up, ready for new foundation walls to be built. All the buildings didn't really get the special treatment though. Chicago was slowly gaining the reputation as a growing and wealthy city. Older, quickly built wooden buildings weren't seen as fitting into that image, and so in Instead of raising them, those buildings, or sometimes even entire rows of buildings, were pulled away by horses into the suburbs. The real OG architectural gentrification, if you ask me. Now, none of this ended up mattering a whole lot though, since just 16 years later, some cow decided to be an arsonist. If you want to raise your very own Midwestern city out of the mud, you're going to want to learn something about architecture, so make sure to subscribe.